I'm Evelyn and I'm a geoholic. Yeah, Alex, welcome back. Hold on here. Let's turn this down a little bit. All right. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> this is one of our um, Friends of the Program episode. So real quick, in case you don't know, if you are a friend of the program, meaning a sponsor, of course, one of the perks of doing that is you get your own episode where you can talk about whatever the hell you want. If you want to talk about why the sky is blue, we can do that. If you want to talk about... <laughs> You know, why cats are a pain in the ass, you can do that. Or if you just want to talk about your uh, your services, your product, what have you, that would be fantastic too. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We've got a sneaky girl with us. So before we get to that, we also have Tita Talk with us. Tita, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm replacing Shawnee today. No, Shawnee. Sean is out gallivanting, as they say. Uh, his birthday was yesterday. So happy birthday, yes. producer Sean. Happy Sean. Birthday. Mm-hmm. And I believe he, maybe it was his wife. That, I'm assuming it was his wife. Hopefully that's not a bad mm-hmm. assumption. Got him tickets to the Suns game this evening. So nice. uh, he is out and about enjoying himself. Like I said, he could have the night off. So uh, Peter, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's been a while. What's, what's new with you? Oh, what's new? Man, it's been a year. Um, Been a year. I've graduated my first lot of students out of the academy, so that's pretty exciting. I've got new students coming in, so rolling ahead with that and um, planning next year. Nice. Oh, and getting ready for Christmas. Getting ready for Christmas. Yeah, it's Uh, right around the corner. mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, And I'm going to be a grandmother. Oh, oh, wow. (laughs) Is it going to be uh, Grandma Pee-Pee? No. <laughs> no. No. What's it gonna, what are you gonna, What are you going to be called? Well, I'm already Mima to the puppy dogs, so whether I'll stay Mima, who knows? Ah, Mima. That's cute. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like it. Does so, make you feel I'm going to have a little girl. Oh, it's a girl. Yay. Yes, it's a girl. Oh, that's so Congrats. sweet. So Congratulations. That's, so exciting. that's exciting. Yeah. In a house full of boys, I'm really happy I've finally oh. got my girl. <laughs> yeah, you got to be ecstatic about that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, what about let's you? Let's get out with this. What's new with me? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's mm-hmm. new with yeah. me? Um, gosh, I spent this last weekend watching a shit ton of curling, to be honest with you. <laughs> there was a big curling tournament in town. And for all the listeners who've been listening for a while, know that I am a curling nerd, mm-hmm. as they mm-hmm. say. So yes. watched a lot of curling this weekend, a lot of football. Fantasy football is winding down. Um, still have one of my teams in the playoffs. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, but other than that, just busy with work, man. Oh man, it's busy this time of year. It's People crazy, trying to isn't wrap it? Stuff up before the new mm-hmm. year, and it's just—I cannot believe we're in the middle of December already. In it's gone so quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It's gonna be twenty twenty four soon. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Since you picked the opening song, Peta, I'm gonna let you tell us about it. I did pick the opening song, so it was the Huda Gurus. Uh, What's my scene? The Hoodoo Gurus are an Australian rock band that emerged in the 1980s uh, and achieved both commercial success and critical acclaim. The band's formation can be traced back to 1981 in Sydney, Australia. The founding members include Dave Faulkner, whose vocals and guitar, who lives near me, uh, Kimball Rendell on guitar, Clyde Bramley on bass and James Baker on drums. Their music is characterised by a blend of rock, pop and garage influences, often infused with a sense of humour and catchy hooks. The Hoodoo Gurus quickly gained popularity in Australia with their energetic live performances and a string of hits, hit singles, including What's My Scene. I think I've seen them probably about mm, six to eight times. Wow. Um, And for those in America, I believe that they may be touring soon over there. Is that right? So there you go. Hmm. Oh, I'll have to check that out. Go and find I, out. I remember them, yeah. 80s band. Love them. One of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And here tonight is the 
Mentoring Mondays studio. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Mentoring Mondays is back uh, a couple weeks ago. Came back. They take, uh, you know, Trent takes a break uh, for a bit and uh, a, a well deserved break. And then he comes back better than ever. So if you're not familiar with Mentoring Mondays, you can find them at mentoringmondays.xyz. And it's really just, um, it's a great resource, you know, for whether you're uh, a beginning surveyor, a seasoned surveyor, curious about surveying, what have you. Trent gets some great guests to come on there and 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 you know talk about what they're passionate about. It's an open forum, so you get to ask questions and that type of thing and get immediate feedback. So it's super cool. So again, mentoring Mondays that X Y Z. Next up, we have the Airworks random trivia. And Peter, since you're sitting in the co-host guest this that evening, would be me. chair this evening, uh, what did you come up with? Uh, I came up with some more stuff about Australia because, hey, why not? Um, so I thought that you guys should all know that Australia is the home to the world's longest straight road, the Air Highway, which stretches for about 146.6 kilometres, which is 91.1 miles. Without a single turn, it runs through vast flat landscapes of the Nullarbor Plain, providing a unique driving experience for those who venture across this remote region. Uh, It runs mostly east-west between Western Australia and South Australia. And, um, yeah, it usually takes about four days to drive it because they suggest that you don't travel during night due to the wildlife of the kangaroos jumping in front of you. Okay, that's my Random trivia. That's awesome. Today. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next up, we have the Advanced Geodetic Surveys, also known as AGS Weekly Words of Wisdom. I think I came up with a pretty fitting quote this week. Uh, your employees learn by example. If they don't see you practicing good safety habits, they won't think safety is important. Pretty legit, Ooh. right? Mm-hmm. Unknown Definitely. author. I'm not sure where that came from, but I found it on the internet. So we're going to run with it. Well, it's true. I was going to pull. I was going to pull a random act of, you know, safety in there, and I thought, nah, let's do something oh, different. Tell me about come a up with something of safety. safety. <laughs> what is it? What's your random oh. act of safety? God, don't ask me now. They're gone. Yeah, you gotta be quick on your feet, that, Peter. I, no, I didn't need that. I didn't need that piece of information, so it's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Retain what I need. Works, I will never <laughs> yes. understand it. Hey there, Kent. Can we talk about Trimble for a second? We sure can. All right. Trimble Geospatial provides solutions that facilitate high-quality, productive workflows and information exchange for a global and diverse customer base of surveyors, engineering and GIS service companies, governments, utilities, and transportation authorities. That was a mouthful, my friend. Trimble's innovative technologies include integrated sensors, field applications, real-time communications, and office software for processing, modeling, and and data analytics. Yeah, using Trimble solutions, organizations can capture the most accurate spatial data and transform it into intelligence to deliver increased productivity and improved decision making. Trimble Geospatial pioneering the future of data intelligence, converging people, product, and place seamlessly to help you make your mark and leave your legacy. They also put on a really great party. Yes, they do. Trimble Dimensions will be there next year. Absolutely. To find out more, go to geospatial.trimble.com. All right, let's, after all of this, let's get our guests in here this evening. Uh, sponsored by XYHT Magazine, of course. And I see that Matt has his XYHT Magazine shirt mm-hmm. on. So we have Matthew Stansbury with us. I'm going to let, and we have Wanda Martita, Martinez, and I'm going to let them do self-introductions real quick. Just name who you're with, kind of what you do, and uh, then we're going to roll with it. So Matt, why don't you go first? Uh, Matt Stansbury. I work currently in the public sector for the Port of Seattle as a civil engineer and land surveyor, and I'm also the owner operator of Safety Apparel and the head designer of the Party Chief Survey Vest. You pretty much a celebrity, as a matter of fact. Mm. Uh, next, <laughs> Wanda. Wanda, tell us a little bit about you. And my name is Wanda Martinez. I am currently working for a private company called Terrain here in um, Bellevue, Washington, um, and I'm a project surveyor. All right, and also a fan of the safety apparel gear, right? Oh, absolutely, yes. 
It's far so, away Matt, here, I isn't think, it? Have you been on before, Matt? I could not remember. I was on a little sideshow when Trent was on there. It was I was just kind of there to say hi and that wasn't oh, really yeah, doing yeah. much that time. See, I, I thought was, he'd been yeah. on. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he remember. has. And, but, and then I was telling Pete, I'm like, it's almost like he's been on. We talk about him and his vest all the freaking mm. time. So it's I like know. everybody knows who Matthew is anyway. So uh, thank you for being here. And a uh, bunch of questions, really, because we haven't really had a chance to have this conversation. Um, how, what, how did you come up with the idea of developing a better safety vest? Uh, well, I had been surveying for just a few years. I started in 2004 and immediately I was figuring out that what we needed was not what was on the market. And I kind of had a penchant for doing a lot of hand sewing. So I started Frankensteining some weird designs together and I just kind of ran with it at that point. I didn't really know what I was doing. It's not what I went to school for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, I guess I was, I wanted to be an art teacher, so I did a lot of art and design classes. So maybe something inside of me said that you need to redesign a safety vest. I don't really know. It's, it's kind of random. How long did the process take before oh, you could, well, like, I... when you went from, like, idea or concept to market? Is that five years? Is it six months? What does that look like? It pro until I had my I I made two hundred and fifty vests the very first time, wow. and it, probably from the time I had the idea and I had something on paper and I was sitting at a bar and someone leaned in and said, "Hey, I can help you make your crazy ideas." No way. I then gained oh, wow. a business partner, mm-hmm. <laughs> who had all the connections, and wow. uh, it kind of went from there. It was still my company, but. It was my ideas, my designs, my company. We just kind of ran it together for a little bit to kind of get me started. And at some point, we parted ways because we also had our own companies on the side. I was running a construction company and still surveying. He was a high-end middleman for Nike and Nordstrom and Disneyland and any rapper who wanted to make clothes, basically. So he had a lot of connections. Was that a chance meeting? Yeah, Yeah. Was that a chance meeting? I'm sorry? Was that a chance meeting or was it a buddy of yours? Uh, no, he was just I kind of, I guess, kind of chance. I mean, he was one of the known guys who hang out at that bar all the time. And I was the current taco eating champion. So ah. we kind of started, we just kind of started chatting and I, I drew stuff on a napkin and he's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I have connections that can run some fast sewing machines and have ideas. And he was all about the brand recognition. He's yeah, like, you got to get yeah. all your tags and all your bamboo tags made out of hemp and this and that. And you got to have all these oh cool God. things. I was like, no, 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 no. Just give me a sticker. <laughs> he wanted to call it the general. <laughs> and I changed it to the party chief because. Oh, wow. What the, a great I, story. I get it. We meant like general. He meant like army general. And sure. in my mind, that meant like, I don't want to make another general vest. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah. to make something yeah. that. Well, it's going to be different. I mean, party chief, people don't even know what that means. And they still wear the vest at this point, mm. which is pretty funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> Matt, funny. how how many um, iterations have you had of, like, from the first one, that 250 that you designed, to what you've got now? Yeah, so that first 250 came out in about 2011. It was a 2011 mm-hmm. design, probably designed in 2010. So it took about three years from quick sketch to actually getting something out there going through all the business you know the llc's and the paperwork wow um about every year i was making a new vest so Mm -hmm. by now i have about seven or eight different changes from the very first one so how different is the current version from the first one in general the body style is the same it's that shorter in the front a little bit longer in the back shoulder pads what has changed is the materials, the weight of the materials, uh, a couple ways that I did uh, color fastness to try to make it keep from fading. Um, and then, of course, this last design came out. I started changing up the pockets. Uh, a lot of people talk to me about what they like and what they don't like, mostly what they don't like, which is perfect. Surveyors, 
opinionated yep. bunch of uh, machete wielding <laughs> mathematicians. So <laughs> they all have their own ideas, and I love it when they tell me what they don't like. So when I get about fifty people telling me the same thing, I'll change it, yeah. and I keep changing cool. it. And some of them are my weird ideas, and some of them are the public's general consensus. I just kind of roll with it like a car company. I try to come out with something new about every year, hmm. but mostly cool. just to make them better. <laughs> yep, it's awesome that you listen to your customers, and. It- you know, make adjustments accordingly when it makes sense. Yep. It seems to be working so far and it's opened up a lot of awesome conversations to meet people from the around the world looking sure. at y'all right here in this room with me. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. have one. Yeah. I don't have one. Uh, I saw you oh. wearing one when you were in Vegas oh, and I was I trying to it. hook up with Rob to get you a vest and it didn't happen in time. <laughs> Because he was in my neighborhood up here in Seattle doing a roof yeah. topo, and I showed up with burritos in the middle of the day and surprised oh him. And I'm like, hey, we got to make this work. And then it just, but I owe you a vest anyway, so we'll make it happen. That's <laughs> awesome. No, it, that was pretty funny because we're out there and, um, you know, we're going around with a heap of Australians, you know, looking at the different different sites and what you guys do and everything with Trent. And as soon as we pulled up and Kevin was there, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a go of the, the equipment, the GPS. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Picking? No, no, it wasn't GPS. It was Total Station picking up curves and stuff. And I went, hey, I need your vest. I've got to put the vest on if I'm going to survey. He's like, really? I went, shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I think so they thought Wanda, I was crazy. Wanda loves the vest and it has inspired her as well. So Wanda, talk about that a little bit. What do you like about mm. the vest and what are some ideas you have from that? Yes. Well, I, first of all, I love Matt's vest. The first vest I wore were one of those um, mesh flimsy material type vests. And to me, uh, um, my, my aunt is is a designer and my mom, she's a seamstress. I've always been into fashion. Um, prior to becoming a surveyor, like that was my goal. I wanted to be a fashion designer. So the first time I tried on one of those vests, I was like, I'm like, I always like to be, I always like to look presentable. And one of those, the things from those vests is that since I have, due to my body proportions, I would have to pull up my vest a little bit so it would fall on top of my hips and I would end up looking like a sack of potatoes. So to me, that was like, no, this is not it. And my toxic trait is I think like I can find a solution to every problem. So I was like, you know what? I am going to start this. I'm going to design my own vest because we cannot be out here looking like this. So um, when I moved to Washington and my former employer, he had given us um, vests and if there were um party tube vest as soon as i tried it on i absolutely loved it the fit is it's amazing i love that it's short in front long at the back i have a long torso so it's perfect it falls on top of my hips so to all the curvy ladies that are are listening to us um this is is the best for you (laughs) it's amazing i love it that's so great you wonder you talked about making a having a vest with a bit more of a feminine touch or fitting a bit better. And like, I know you say that, you know, Matt's vests are, are really good. Um, the one I tried on was massive. So, you know, I high sort of can't say how, how it would fit me properly. But yeah, I was. Um, but yeah, for, for me, it's like, yeah, those, those mesh throw on ones are very big and baggy and stuff like that. And I sort of prefer something that is a bit more like still roomy, but, you know, a bit more fitted to my, to my body sort of thing. So um, is that something you would think about? You know, you talk about how much one fits well, but um, would you, you, I know that there's been discussion about making a female version. Yes. Tell, tell me, tell me yeah. about that. I'm um, excited to talk about that. <laughs> to me, one of the things that, um, one of like more, most of my basic design, so let me just give like a short, a short, um, yeah, don't give up all of your trade secrets, Wanda. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so the thing is, um, well, I was growing up in Puerto Rico. Um, my mom, she would sew my uniforms. She would make my pants. And yeah, the thing that me. she would do is when I would gain a little weight or when it was too tight, she would add a piece of fabric in a way. The cut that she would do it, she would blend it in with the fabric of the pants, sort of that it looks mm -hmm. like it's part of the design. Amazing. So mm -hmm. that's a thing that I would do to the vest with a different type of material. So incorporating the current material that it has just to give it that hourglass figure but incorporating that fabric in a way whether if you're um have a little volume in your midsize or if your uh, hips are wide that it would just mold to your body mm -hmm. that was like one of my ideas and if you also are planning to wear a jacket underneath the vest in a way that it, it would fit perfectly yeah yeah, yeah. well so matt well, is that something that um is gonna happen we have an open discussion currently started <laughs> right wanda yes <laughs> yeah, we're gonna probably do some coffee sometime and actually do face to face and skip all the social media and texting and just hang out and and just see what happens who knows you know mm. you never know i think it'd be fun it to at least be. try because i every, <laughs> everybody out there has awesome ideas not hmm. enough people are coming forward because they're scared. Yeah, true. I think it would be hard, though, and I'm, I'm going to say what every guy out there is thinking right now. Women come in so many different shapes and sizes, <laughs> right? I mean, there's hardly two that are the same. Where men's bodies are pretty much the same for the most part and not that much variation. So I think it would be really hard to design a vest that would capture... Like if, like if if you designed a female vest and you'd have a small, medium, and large, um, yeah, it would be it, it's it, it's gonna be difficult. I love the idea, and I think it has to happen. It's just I, I feel like it, there 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 are definitely some challenges there. I think that's yeah, there's challenges there, but um, we all go out and buy clothes in a small, medium, large, or an extra large. Um, so to have a vest, which is not going to be a form fitting thing, that's still going to have room around it. It's just so that it's mm. not just straight or whatever. Um, you know, I, I think it's doable. I'm excited. I think we're going to be playing with some elastic. Yeah. We're mm. going to be playing with some stretchy stuff. Mm. I think we're going to be mm. playing with stuff that bunches mm. and, and possibly pegging material yeah. on the back where you bring it together and sew it. Right. When you would like bring in a dress around your hips and then you peg it in the back and you sew it sure. and you do it from the Adjustable. inside so it doesn't show yeah. and it lays light. It's supposed to be like a pleat, that kind of thing. I think we'd be probably working along some sort of design like that. I mean, maybe there's some straps on the side. I, I don't know. We haven't we haven't got very far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at Matt talking like a fashion designer. Though. I know. <laughs> it's My like he's done this thing before. My mom taught me how to play on the sewing machine. <laughs> But it, it's Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy's a saint. She got me working on a sewing machine once, and this was still in the middle of trying to even design the vest at the beginning, and she would help me. During those first 250 vests, she helped me do some modifications, which was nice. Mm. Right. Like, sewed yeah. some of my pockets shut <laughs> on accident. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. So besides the fit portion of it, Wanda, um, like the pockets and everything else, the quality – um you like what else what matt's got going on there oh i love it i love the stitching i love um the patches <laughs> I, sorry <Awesome. laughs> i love it i love the amount of pockets it has it that's also one of the the, the things i love about the vest yeah, i think it. that's no, one no, of the you... things that i I see is the pockets, the the pockets that you have in there, and to be able to carry everything on you without having to have a fill bag, um, but not feel like it's overbearing when you're sort of carrying everything. I mean, uh, I I'm sure in the um, however many years I've been surveying that uh, a fill bag hanging off the side of my um my hips has not been the best thing. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that in uh, Australia. 
there's not that many vests. No, I've had a hard time no. with the Australian market, even with David Ipping. Mm -hmm. uh, he was repping it down there for a while and, and, and buying them in bulk. But people wear, what is it, the tool belt? Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, a lot of tool bags. belts. So it's been hard to get people to convert over to a vest because it's already hot. Why would they put another layer on? I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, we still have to wear, well, no, it depends where you're working, but most most sites you have to wear a vest. Um, okay. The biggest thing that I see these days is that they don't, they don't even have fill bags anymore because they don't need them. The instrument measures. Mm. Yeah. down to the ground for the you know for your heights that you you don't hardly ever have to carry anything anymore unless you're setting stuff out but yeah that's the difference i see now but no oh, gosh i would have loved i would have loved one of those when i was surveying that's for sure well Matt, mm. maybe you found your uh, new australian sales rep <laughs> <laughs> but we're always selling the ladies vest down there we're gonna get one we're gonna get wanda's Designs down there and check them out. See how it goes. Do you, do you know what? I think I think there would. I think we could have a market down here in Australia uh, for the female vest. The it, not and not just in the safety. You know everything about uh, the female gear, the boots, the pants, the shirts. You know, getting put into a male clothes is not fun. And then the female stuff that they make from a male company doesn't fit you properly because they just go, oh, we'll just, uh, let's get rid of the pockets or let's just shut, cut, cut this down a bit and make them a bit tighter and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, yeah, it's not made for, for us. So, uh, it's a big thing everywhere, not just in Australia is the, um, the, the female side of clothing and accessories and that sort of stuff within the construction sort of industry. Hmm. Matt, you also do some customizing, right? I have done some customizing. I should open a second shop just for that, maybe. I don't have the time right now, but when people, sometimes before they purchase it, but often after they'll purchase it, they'll have their own ideas. And they'll yeah. say, hey, let's, can we do something like this or something like that? And depending on what materials I have, it, I usually say yes. And we find a way to make it happen. So there's been some... Definitely some custom rods are out there whipping around, having a good time. And they send me pictures of it in the field. And it's great. Love, I love seeing the changes because I'll meet other surveyors in the field. I don't even introduce myself. I just say, how do you like that vest? Oh, it's okay. It's been lasting me six years, but it's just okay. <laughs> oh my and God. I'll ask them, like, you know, what, what don't you like about it? And then I'll also look at how they do things. I've never put a tape measure up on my radio strap before until my buddy in Australia was doing that. I saw someone else put a framing hammer hanging from their from the other radio strap. Just different things. I saw people cutting little slits in the pencil holes so they could have when their red pencils get shorter and shorter, have little notches to put them in. So I've seen these crazy things and some things I'll use and incorporate it into a new design and other things. You should see the vests I wear. I've <laughs> They got all sorts of weird bells and whistles that I keep adding to them, which are just ridiculous. What are awesome. some of the things that pit that that guys that want customization? What sort of things do they? What have you done? Um, the last one I did, the guy had a very specific radio. We've talked about how the radio straps up here. They some people say they're a little bit too flimsy. I'm like, well, these are not made for your big radio. Those things take a beating up here, especially in the Pacific Northwest. It rains a lot. It's wet. It's cold. These are made for your little mics that go on the pigtail and the radio goes in your pocket. So I always tell them how I put my radio in that inside trough pocket by my love handle and then run the pigtail out of my armpit hole up to the mic. And those mics can take a beating in the rain. So they're good to go. And he's like, I actually do that same thing, but I have a very specific size radio and I'm not getting rid of it. And I put it on the inside upper pocket, which is I, I think I got rid of one of them for the last design because I was only using it for business cards and they would always get wet. And who uses business cards anymore? I, I, it's, it's, it seems like it's dead like a fax machine to me. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, so and he, made, he wanted me to build a custom long strap that was a double-sided Velcro. So I extended the Velcro on the pocket. And then I did a 
double fold stitch and did a bar tack, which is the stacked hard stitches that I call power stitching on all the stress points on the vest. So it's it, it doesn't rip me very easily. So I just did a couple of those in there. And then the length of the Velcro ended up being about nine inches, I guess. Let's just call it seven tenths, seven and a half tenths, just for fun. <laughs> Imperial what? <laughs> And uh, and yeah, that was about all it was. Blah it blah blah blah. Up, yeah, right. <laughs> it was just ended up being an extra long strap, so a little bit of extra sewing. And I would I built up a little mock cardboard shape to fit in there. So when it strapped over, the radio stayed in one spot and it didn't move. It didn't fall out when he leaned over a manhole, and it held it in there per exactly how he wanted it. And it basically just caught him the cost him the a price of a hat, and he just didn't get mm-hmm. the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Because then he would he, uh, he would order off the internet, and I had already had customized it and taken pictures, gone back and forth a couple times, and he ordered a vest and a hat, and I just sent the modified vest, and everyone was happy. There you go. Hmm. Now, do you do anything like, can you put, like, company logos on them or anything like that? I used that to, kinda, but yeah. I can't control the companies that are actually doing the work. And oh, for quite a yeah. while, places were having problems doing silk screening, which is what companies wanted to save money instead of embroidering it. So I could, things were kept getting messy and they were coming back after me because logos were having, were falling, peeling off. I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, So I just tell people, I'm like, here's some options in this area, but to cost effective is usually to find someone near you. There's plenty of places near you. Get a good vector form file for your logos and just do it the right way. Sure. Get it embroidered. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Is there any... Like, do you take on any liability being a safety vest designer and producer and seller? I've thought about that. So I do have a type of insurance that covers my company. I don't know about liability if somebody got hurt and they came after me civilly. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I have attorneys that I use for different reasons. Um, Recently... There's a gentleman that gave me a cease and desist because of my shoulder pads because he thought he invented shoulder pads. And all I had to do is show him some old Corel draw d- designs from 2010 wow. that showed the original vest had shoulder pads. And he was like, oh, uh, uh, OK, so it's good to have a couple of attorneys around. That's crazy. I mean, it's still expensive, but I guess that's part of a business that no one thinks about. Yeah, for sure. Patents, part of- trademarks, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. And and building them to designing and and building them to safety standards. ANSI, yes, American mm-hmm. National Standards Institute. You use mm-hmm. the third party testing facilities, and you can send in that vest and give them a couple grand, and they'll tell you you failed, and they won't tell you why. Oh, wow! Oh, really? You got to go online to buy all their big packets of how to do what. So it's wow. not easy. You have to get all your materials tested separately which is why i don't use any knockoffs like the striping is very expensive Mm -hmm. because that's 3m scotch light striping or pvc but that's the stuff that ansi passes without even questioning it and it doesn't fall apart very easily so i'm happy yeah so wanda let me ask you this are there any other like safety specific challenges that you as a as a female encounter is it gloves um anything else that comes to mind um, for me, mostly, well, uh, my experience has been mostly in the construction industry. So I would find it, um, me, um, I'm considered like I'm five feet 10 and I'm, I'm big, but for a petite woman, it's extremely challenging because I've seen how difficult it is for them. That's, that's a size small or an extra small, and they would have to wear whatever um vest they have available or whatever they give them and it's and it's tough because they can get stuck on on, and machinery i mean it's it's, yeah it's a safety hazard it is no doubt no doubt so sean do you ever wish that you could have a weekly cup of coffee with a like-minded survey professional actually i have wished that I'm sure you have. I am here to tell you that you can do just that by participating in the virtual Mentoring Mondays program. What is that like? 
Think of Mentoring Mondays as the weekly office hours of the surveying profession. And the cool thing is you can find out more by simply going to mentoringmondays.xyz. And while we're on the topic of becoming the best surveyor ever, you also need to check out Wisdom Wednesdays. Oh, really? Have you ever thought about how awesome it would be to have a book club specifically for land surveyors? You know, I have thought that that would be a really good idea. <laughs> I thought you have. And our good friend Trent Keenan has once again beat you to the punch with his Wisdom Wednesdays group. Wisdom Wednesdays is a great opportunity to read survey-specific books and have a weekly interactive conversation about each informative chapter with like-minded professionals. If you're interested and want to find out more, go to wisdomwednesdays.xyz. Um, what is, are there any other products in the safety apparel line? Net? Is it just uh, is um, it just the party chief, or yeah, is there I mean, something there, else? There are. They're just not very well known. I push the heavy yeah. duty party chief. I think is what you were trying on down there, Peta. And I think it's also what you have, Wanda. Yes. Heavy duty got the fuzzy hand pockets, right? Yeah. All right, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. That seems to be the the big one, the most popular size large, heavy duty orange. That's the most popular from around the world for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there's also the summer vest, which is I developed when I moved to Tennessee for five years. I called it the Southern vest for a while because no one down there wore vests and it was hot. So I had to make yeah. something that was cost less and was a, a lighter weight in general without falling apart and without losing what I would consider to be the party chief vest design. So I started working out when I, was, I basically took the same front and I had to make the back mesh and a lighter, like a, a fraction of the material. I think the heavy duty ones run on about a 500 D right now. And the summer is a 150. Wow. Had to make our own materials and put high density threads in it. So it doesn't fall apart because sure. the stuff that I was getting sourced out was still after you sew it, you could pull on it and it was, it would just take off running. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. How many times do I have to stitch this to make it work? So I've done uh -huh. a lot of, a lot of uh, product development, a lot of failure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> kind of kept going because it was always a side project. I was, yeah. I was surveying or and or running a construction company doing granite and cabinets at the same time. Wow, what um, it's got to be rewarding for you though, and make it all worthwhile when you people are sending you pictures or posting on social media of them, you know, wearing their vests and a variety of different, you know situations or circumstances from all over the world at this point yeah this is not what i thought was going to happen i thought i was making a couple vests for a couple of my survey buddies and then i started making more survey friends i yeah. think i finally got on social media in 2016 forced by my friend who makes websites he's like you have to do this you have to do this yeah I was like Ugh, fine I was already on LinkedIn, which I thought was for business professionals. So I open all these accounts, I don't know, Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook and Instagram and all these. And, and I immediately pretty much shut them all back down. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and then my website kept telling me through the analytics that stuff was yeah. coming directly from Instagram. I'm like, ah. Mm -hmm. So here I am. God damn it. <laughs> do you do all, do you do right? all that yourself? Matt, do you do all that yourself or do you have some uh, some help? I don't as as really have much help. Goes. No, so. I mean, I have a lot of smart friends. I try to surround myself with smart people to lift me up. And I always need help with computers. My cousin does my IT. Um, I had a friend help me build the first website. And then when he didn't want to deal with it anymore, he helped me get one, build one through Shopify website. Oh, yeah. And then other than mm -hmm. that, I'm the only one that does all the marketing and... I mean, I don't know. It's it's just me. I've, I've I've built it with such a low overhead that even employees are too expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get it. So, do most of your purchases come through the website then, or how, do, how does um, that look like? I I mean, the website safetyapparel.us, which is also I bought the domain. I'm excited. It's partychiefvest.com. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. Because safetyapparel.us, no one even knows what that means. Like, okay, cool, mm -hmm. safetyapparel.us.com. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's because like yeah. someone else owns safetyapparel.com. Sure. Or even essay.com. I don't know. So I just sit on a waiting list. But I finally got the partychiefest.com. Uh -huh. So That's the cool. website brings in uh, orders, which is great. Uh, but I do have wholesaler distributors, whatever you want to call them. 
Yeah. Pretty much everywhere across the states. There's plenty of areas that I still don't have a good one in California, which is really weird. It's weird. Yeah. I started here in Washington, and we're pretty psycho about safety, so I had a leg up here. All I had to do is walk around and shake some hands, and people would be like, okay, okay. I think I did my first LSAW up here, which is our local chapter uh, survey conference. I had one vest, and I had my own booth with my business partner. I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> Who wants to make some orders? Go ahead and try it on. And people are looking at us like, what? Oh, that's awesome. So that's all I had. I had one sample. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That was worthy to show off. And uh, I don't know. I kept chasing these shows in Tennessee when I lived down there, Tennessee and Georgia. Marietta was beautiful. Um, did a couple in Kentucky. Just kind of bounced around those areas. And then all, you know, up and down the coast here. Tried to meet as many people as I could when I was driving around over there and I like, drove back and forth a couple times. So I don't know. Kind of fly by the seat of your pants and. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just a surveyor. I just give me a machete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my but they last, all the time. But they last a, a, they last a fair a amount of time, don't they? They're not supposed to fall apart. There's yeah. a leather company here in town called Filson out of Seattle. And I kind of tried to model my company after them because I could get some chaps from them and I would beat them up after a couple of years. And if something started to fall apart, I'd bring it back to them. They would fix it or give me a new pair. Mm -hmm. I don't. You know, you don't want to just give things away. You'll run out of money quick. But I've fixed plenty of vests. I mean, not a lot, but there's always a couple people here and there like, hey, something's wrong or can you give this thing a once over? And I'm like, sure, if you ship it to me and get all your grease sticks out of your pockets, you know, empty your vest, <laughs> then I'll I will I'll beat it up. I will run it through a sewing machine. I'll fix everything mm. that I can. I'll run it through my wash machine and then I'll re-grease your zippers. And send it on its way. Good luck. Oh, wow. Because I know what it's like when my vest would fall apart before I started making my own. Kind of ruins your day. It can ruin your week. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome you do that. It's amazing customer service. It's customer service. What about um, not just the saying, you, it's not just a party chief vest, is it? Excuse me? It's not just oh, a party chief vest. Oh, not, ju not just for surveyors? Mm. That one? Yep, yeah, well, I started a yep. funny ad campaign a while back about because I was trying to get the vests out of just the niche of the survey world, especially for some reason we're shrinking. Mm -hmm. That means whoever's in there now, we should be paid more. Is everyone listening? <laughs> Another episode. I mean, get kids into survey, need more kids. You know, got to get more. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do we got? I don't know what it's like in yeah. Australia, but here in the States, women in construction, we got like 9%. And like we people talk about you know, we don't have enough people to do things. And like, what better way than to start getting more people involved and interested in construction trades in general surveying would be mm. great. Cause now it's not just an outdoor job. People are like, I don't want to work outside. I'm like, you don't have to work outside. Right. Yeah. And you yeah. can work anywhere in the world. Exactly. Yeah. You can work from mm. home. Thanks to COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Wanda, you, what, you said you just started go, surveying in touche. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you start surveying in uh, Puerto Rico? Is that right? Um, correct. I I study land surveying and mapping in um in Puerto Rico. And um, after I graduated, I had an opportunity to work in Georgia at a construction company. Worked in um, roadway construction for three years and um, took my LSIT, my PLS, and I'm licensed in Puerto Rico. Moved to Washington. And now I'm awesome. um, mostly working in the office. Yeah. yeah. How do you like living in Washington? It's different. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's the weather. It's the weather. It's the weather, no mostly, doubt. Mostly, yeah. but other than that, it's beautiful. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the weather has got to be very different from Puerto Rico. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> The rain, the cold, it's, yeah. Oh, man. You check out her Instagram account. She's been having fun in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> She's been running around the North Cascades and the peninsula. She's been mountains, <laughs> rivers, streams, the pretty it's leaves perfect. and everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> All the That's things awesome. surveyors love, being outdoors, eh? Yes. Yeah, yeah until they mm. don't, right? Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I yeah. Ended so up how did, getting... what, what got you into surveying, Wanda? Um, well, initially, I just sort of like fell into it because I, when I, I didn't even know what surveying was when I um, first started university. I started studying architecture for two years after that. That wasn't it. So I switched to majors to land surveying. They told me, oh, you can work in the office or you can work outdoors. And I was, oh, that's perfect. So after I switched to majors, um, I decided that it was it. Surveying was it. It's always the way, isn't it? It's always (laughs) the way. It's always, I fell into it. Stop doing something else and then end up falling into surveying. Yep. <laughs> fell into it. Fell into it. Yeah. It's, you know what? We should anyway. make t-shirts. I fell into it. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Shh, shh. Everybody Cut says that. it all the Cut time. I out. fell into it. <laughs> fell into survey. I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah mm. Exactly. Um, Matt, I want to ask. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I want to ask. Um, you mentioned earlier about um, people's ideas. Um, yeah. And being able to, you know, bring them to fruition. Um, how how do we how do we make those things happen? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I think just listening to Wanda and you poor folks having to listen to me about my story. <laughs> hopefully, somewhere in there, it can inspire people. Got my other friend Amanda. She mm. in she invented those lead legs. And just, we kind of collaborated on it because I had a bunch of materials mm-hmm. and just come, but she had all the ideas and she drew up all those schematics and we just kind of made it happen. And I was, had c- contacts for her to make this stuff, but it's, it, I mean, it really takes uh, a small team. It's you, you got to put your idea out there in front of some people that you can help you. You can chase it as much as you want, but I've had help all along the way from my mom helping me with the sewing machine to having a business partner for a few years who had great connections, um, to having even a good friend who was a surveyor who would tell me, that's a horrible idea. What are you doing? There you go. You know, you need those people too. Yeah. You need a little bit of all that stuff, you know, and some, some of it, they were right. And some of it, they're wrong. You know, it's where the stubborn comes out. I'm like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm a surveyor. Don't you know that? Yeah. I'm not here to argue about who's right. I'm a surveyor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's it takes it takes a little bit of hair to get out there and get it started for sure. But more people yeah. need to get out there. We should just try it. I know there's more ideas. There's plenty of others. Mm. Just just in the survey, even construction in general. I know people have ideas. They've talked about it. I've even talked to other people who had talked about making a vest in the past too. And I offered them like, well, let's take a look at your designs. Maybe it's something you can make your own line or something. You know, mm. bring yeah. it. Let's do it. We can only make it better. I assumed that my designs would get ripped off by Home Depot or something by now, and I would get buried in court trying to save it, and I wouldn't fight it. But if that's the design that they would have to run with from then, I assume that maybe we would win because it's just raising the bar to get it out of that safety lingerie that Wanda was talking about. Yeah. (laughs) Safety lingerie. Say no to safety lingerie. There you go. You want a mantra, Ken? (laughs) I don't have a mantra, but say no. You know what you need to do? You need to make a uh, safety apparel calendar. How about that? I have made a calendar. He does. Yes? I made one uh, for 2022, maybe. I didn't make one for this year. Yeah, I I picked a bunch of weirdos from across the states that had my vest that I wanted to play. So I asked people, they're like, no "No." females in there. I know. I'm sorry. I told people at the beginning, Uh like, I wanted to do a traditional firefighter one is what I was trying to go for. So I was trying to get them to, like, you know, like man up and like, I'm like, show me your tough pictures. And some of the pictures were so ridiculous. I was like, well, you're, f- you're face down in the snow. I'm just going to have to put that in there. It's just too funny. I'm like, <laughs> So I was going for the traditional, though. I've talked to many people since then. There may be an international one, a women's one, you one know. with or without there your you pets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves their cat. <laughs> after, after, after everyone saw that I spoke to, saw that one for you and it was all male that were coming to me and going we need to make a female surveying one <laughs> you do perfectly mm. i don't know i mean no. it, it can happen it, it just takes a little time and other people to cooperate which could be hard yes. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's like i use so many people's photos right and it's only because we yeah. talk to each other and 
through the internet mostly and we're all kind of friendly uh but i've never made anyone sign anything no one's ever received money uh not like that people who post the stuff on the internet they usually tag me so it's kind of like here use this photo once in a while yeah. i reach out to people that i barely know that i just found their account and be like hey is it cool if i use this and I'm always like of course whatever whatever you want everyone's mm. been super cool in, a, in an great. age of where everything's a little bit litigious nowadays it's mm. uh, it's kind of scary about how things could go wrong but we just try to be nice about it and if someone doesn't like something i'll i just yank it immediately whatever yeah. it was like hey i didn't want my kid in there that's a get kid in survey thing why would you want to ruin someone else's life it's a joke but i'm like all right so i just take the picture down like i don't i don't even need to argue it's no big deal mm. but everyone's usually really nice about it so it's kind of cool oh my god it's crazy <laughs> so what else matt i mean what's the future of safety apparel look like keep working on some new designs maybe maybe some ladies designs from yeah. one design down there <laughs> <Wand design. laughs> And uh, I, like that I got some class three ones that came out with zip off cool. sleeves. That's in the summer version in yellow. I got I'm got a hunter's vest. That's basically, oh, wow. basically the same vest without striping. Um, it needs a lot of tweaks, though, because I'm not a good hunter. So I have mm -hmm. friends that are and they have ideas. So sure. they want to collaborate on a hunting vest. I'm also been working on an FR vest for a while, but getting the testing correct is difficult what is that so i'm just instead of using nomex or some other weird spray on chemicals that are probably not good for your skin when you sweat i'm going with 100 percent cotton right now but it's hard to make 100 percent cotton really bright my vests are polyester that's why they're bright ah. and flammable <laughs> so to get into the oil and gas industry and electricians, high voltage, and all that at the same time, I've made some samples that are 100% cotton and non-metallic, non-conductive. Anything that was metal is now plastic or some sort of a polymer. Um, the materials are 100% cotton, and I'm going to get all the paperwork right, and I'm going to try to get it tested and see what happens. Well, I mean, there's stuff out there already, isn't there? Yeah. And it's like $300 or $200 for a vest. Mm -hmm. So if I can make okay. something that has better functionality instead of just yep. putting out something expensive with the materials, if yep. I could make something on my own with good functionality, I think I could find a way into that market without mm -hmm. having to charge that much. Wow. Because in my mind, yeah, surveyors, which are usually the end user who end up buying my products, we are all chronically underpaid for the weight on our shoulders of what we do every day. The yeah. liability and how our notes can end up in court. So why are we chronically underpaid? I don't know. But they're buying their own vests, and I don't want to keep raising my prices. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Um, how many hours a week do you spend thinking about this, Matt? <laughs> oh, good question. Everyone starts a business because they don't want to work for that one <laughs> boss anymore. You start a business, and you have a lot of bosses. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I try not to think about it that much. Kent, thanks. Work-life <laughs> balance stuff, right? Work-life balance. I, you know, I do my normal survey job during the day and then I come home. I think I take about 15 to half an hour break. Whatever needs to be done around the house, get the mail, pet the dog. And then I start processing vests and try to get them in the mail as fast as possible and do whatever paperwork that goes along with it, which is mm. not fun. Interesting. So Wanda, how many hours a week do you spend thinking about how great Matt's vests are? <laughs> you don't have to answer that, Wanda. <laughs> oh, God. We should talk more about the cool That's thing that Wanda set up with the other surveyors in Puerto Rico. What's it called, Wanda? Women in Survey in Puerto Rico. So oh, wow. um, oh, yes. what we did is the we created a, a chat on WhatsApp. And right now we are 72, I believe, um, wow. surveyors or all that's from amazing. Puerto Rico, female surveyors. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so we're, we're planning on going to the Women's Summit next year. Oh, mm. yeah, that, that's becoming a really big event. I wanted to go to that. 
You should put on all these ladies yeah. that are in her group are not just women surveyors in Puerto Rico. They are in school. They are chasing their LSITs. How many? You got like six or seven of them have licenses? Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, do you know Ruth? Yes. What's her? Um, I was her intern when she was the... No way. There you go. The... That's when awesome. She... Yeah. The surveyor state. Yeah. She's awesome, yeah. Her and her husband. I can't his name escapes me right now, but uh the two of them, Ruben. yeah, we had them on the show. Ruben, that's right. Yeah. What a sweet couple. Yeah. yeah. They're the ones that like you guys gotta come to the Puerto Rico geospatial conference or whatever in March. So I'm like mm. sounds like uh something we should consider for sure. Yeah. Hmm. That's we, we as the the four of us in this <laughs> small little group right now. I heard we <laughs> <laughs> so funny what else you guys want to get out so there? much closer to you guys than it is to me <laughs> mm, yeah it's a plane ride it doesn't matter what about this uh vegas party you guys are doing every year should i go check it out next year uh yeah which one the dimension <sighs> oh definitely yeah definitely absolutely 100 yeah? percent. yeah, yeah okay. gotta go I almost crashed well, the like, party this year. I was just gonna go up, start harassing Rob until he let me crash in his hotel. But uh, I, I <laughs> ended up having some family stuff, so I, I didn't make it. But next year, I think I'll actually plan something out, and I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Um, I've already chatted with Mr. Robert Martin about that a little bit. Oh yeah, Mr. Yeah. Surveying with Robert. He yeah, mm -hmm. he's awesome. wants to possibly share a booth. That sounds like nothing yeah. good can come of it, and sounds great for sure. For sure. Nice. Yeah, we um so the G Hawks, we, we basically go every other year. Cause every other year, like last year was the one that's not so big. It's more focused on um like teaching and tech tips and uh you know promoting the new software and technology, whatever. But uh this year, 2024 will be the next big one. There'll probably be who knows, eight thousand people there. It'll be double the size for sure. So twenty twenty four is the the one to go to. Mm. So we'll see you there. Yeah. And you, and you, I'm assuming the G Hawks have a booth. You are more than welcome as a friend of the program to display your products proudly. Ooh, I like the sound of that. All right. right? I'll have to chat exactly. about that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What else? Mark, uh, I just what? need you to start saving if you want me over there for that one. <laughs> yeah. Decisions, decisions. Uh, yes. what, what else, Mana? What do you want to get out there? Anything? She's, can you hear me? No, she's got nothing. <laughs> oh, no. Tell, tell me about her? your office job you have now as a licensed surveyor from Puerto Rico working in Washington. I think we uh, lost her. You mean um, from my office job, you said, from, from working from Puerto Rico? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. No, I was just saying you got a license in Puerto Rico, but oh. you're working in an office job up here in Washington. So, oh yes, but um, I'm on my way to um, achieve taking a. I took the test in September, the state exam, um, oh. for Washington, but yeah. um, I failed the exam, so I'm going to retake the test in March. So you already took your yeah. LSIT. Correct. Okay, so you're actually going for your test. All right, hey. You tried, no problem. You're gonna do it again. I don't. I only know of like one person who passed it the first time. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Oh. Yeah, I've had <laughs> <Yeah>. that too. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. That is awesome. I'm that glad that awesome. you're doing that. That's that's more than I got. <laughs> what about you, Peta? Anything else you want to get out before we scoot out? No, I can't wait to see and hear more about this new vest that's gonna happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. Wand yeah, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you got a really good thing going. I know I know a lot of people here in Arizona that absolutely love your vests, uh, mm. myself included. And um, yeah, kudos, man. You're doing something awesome for the profession. So love it. Right on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Wanda, thank you for coming on the Geoholics with us. Thank you so much for thinking about me. This was amazing. It's been great, Wanda. Thank you so much. Uh, great to meet you. And uh I'm sure we'll stay in touch. Likewise. Thank you. All right. I'm All glad right, guys. you made it, Peter. I'm glad you made it. Yes. It's Sorry uh... about the uh, technical difficulties early on. 
Oh. All right. Adding value and making friends as we do at the Geoholics. If anyone would like to be a guest on a future show or if you have any uh, topical ideas, shoot us an email at info at geoholics.com. Good news. Uh, what's my scene? Available everywhere. Until next time, everybody. Hitting me. And most importantly, be safe and healthy. What's my